What's up YouTube? All right, here we go. Next video, pulling and shaping. Starting right where we left off. We've got this piece of clay that is opened already. I did the DJ move to compress the floor of the um, the clay. And what we're going to do today is we're going to make a bowl. So already there's a slight curve right here um, on the inside, which is good. It's setting us up for the bowl. On the outside, what I want to do is I'm going to press this clay in just a bit so you can see a little better. I also move the light so you can see a little better. Um, the next thing we're going to do is make a groove. Get your groove on, okay? So with your hand, make a little duck and it eats the cookie, right? It eats half of the sponge and I call this move the duck and cookie. It's really important that your thumb is pressing tightly against those fingers, okay? This is a lot stronger than just using your fingers that are straightened and hyperextended, right? If you push like this and you're just using your fingertips to do your pulls, um, you probably will eventually struggle with the amount of clay that you can throw, okay? So if you're struggling with like not being able to throw anything taller than your hand, it's probably because you're pulling just with your fingertips. If you want to throw larger, you know, use your thumb to brace or use your knuckle. Then you can really put some, some pressure on the clay without being uncomfortable, okay? So anyways, here we go. First step for uh, that I do for doing a pull is I make a little groove down here. I call this move get your groove on, all right? You want to press in with your middle finger behind the sponge until you see a little bit of a shadow, okay? So that's the first first move, get your groove on. Second move, um, second part of a pull is you got to make sure that your inside hand is sliding. It's totally wet from the bottom to the top, okay? So your inside hand should slide with, with zero friction. And the last step is you should brace your thumb on your outside hand. It doesn't matter really where, um, but it should touch your hand or the sponge so that your hands can come up in unison as if they're one claw lifting the clay up, all right? You don't want to have your hands independent if you can help it. Um, because sometimes your inside hand might travel at a different rate, different speed than your outside hand, and you want them to come up at the same time. Okay? So, remember, if the wheel is a, is a clock, you got 12, 3, 6, this is where you want to do the majority of your uh, pulling, okay? Between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. That is because the clay is going away from you, and it's also closest to your body. Okay? Now what a lot of beginners, what happens to a lot of beginners is they start at three and their hand gets pulled by the, the spinning clay up to two. Okay? What I recommend is that you try and start closer to your body, closer to your core, you're going to have a little bit more control. So start at, at about five o'clock. Okay? Get your right elbow right against your hip so that you are um, locked in. Okay? Outside hands at five. Inside hands at five, groove, slide, brace the thumb. That's the mantra. Groove, slide, brace. Groove, slide, brace. Groove, slide, brace. Middle fingers in the groove. Index finger is on the ridge right above. They're both putting pressure. I'm going to press in for three seconds and then lift both hands up for ten seconds. Okay? And then at the top, I'm going to hold for three and release for three. So that's three plus ten, thirteen plus three is 16 plus 3 is a 19 second pull. Okay, it's going to be 19 to 20 seconds. Um, when you're learning to do this, go ahead and count out loud. It'll help slow you down and slow is the name of the game. All right. Also, most of the work is with the outside hand pressing in. Here I go. Three seconds in and I'm going to begin. Three, two, one, and now I'm lifting both hands. Ten, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. When you get to the top, like this, oops, 
um, you want to slowly release, okay? What I see a lot of beginners do is they'll get to the top of their pull. I'm going to compress the clay here. This is called compressing the clay or compressing the rim. Gentle squeeze at three, six o'clock. Put your finger over the top. Okay. Here's what a lot of beginners do. They'll get to the top of their pull and they keep pulling and they go right off the top and look what happens. It, it makes one little pinch spot out of the top of your rim. That's not what you want. That'll give you a little bit of unevenness. To fix it, do this. Compress your rim. Okay. So instead, when you get to the top of your pull, your fingers are up here, hold, and then slowly open on a three count. Okay. All right. Let's do that again. Groove slide brace, the name of the game. Here you. Here we go. There's my groove. See that little bit of shadow? Inside hand slides. Put that thumb on that hand, on the duck and the cookie. Here we go, here we go. I'm gonna press in. Three, two, one, and lift. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Come to the top, hold, hold, hold. Three, two, one, and slow release. Now, as I'm going up, I am thinking about the wall thickness, okay? Wall thickness is everything. As you are learning to do these pulls, you should stop and feel where are you thick and where are you thin. Right now I can feel I'm, a, I'm thinnest right here, and as I go down, the wall is starting to get wider and thicker, right? So that means I've got lots of clay down here. You can also tell because, look, my inside is about this wide, and my outside is about this wide. So I've got a lot of clay. I've got a lot of clay down there, okay? What that tells me is I need to be more aggressive on my pull from the bottom, about bottom half, okay? So as you are learning, you wanna, or as you're throwing, you wanna do your pull, you wanna evaluate your wall thickness, okay? Do your pull, compress the rim, Evaluate your wall thickness. Okay, here we go. Groove slide brace. A lot of the production potters, they'll tell you, you know, you want to get your 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 height to finish your pulls in, in about three pulls. That's a good goal to shoot for, but don't be overly concerned about it. Don't get anxious about it. If it takes you four pulls or five or six, who cares? You know? It doesn't matter. Production potters are doing that because they're you know, time is money and they're just trying to crank it out. But as a student, as you're learning, you know, don't, don't, don't fret about it. Here we go. Groove. There's that groove. And I'm going to do uh, another pull. Now I'm going to do it incorrectly. And I want you to watch this because this is what a lot of people do when they're learning. They press in, they let up, and then they lift. And it looks like this. They press in. Can you guys see that? Press in and they go like this. Watch this. Boom. And they jump the bump. See that? How I, how that this bump right here didn't come up. That's what happens. And if that happens to you, that means you you went in and then you let off off the gas. You know, you let off the pressure, and then you went up. But what I want you to do is this. I want you to push in. Okay, you're pushing in, and then you slowly transfer that inward motion to an upward motion. Okay. And see how that bump is coming up? That's a ton of clay that is just coming up into the wall of this bowl. You know what I'm saying? Groove slide brace. Let's do it again. You don't need to, like, wait. I'm going to compress the rim a little bit. Bada bing. All right. There we go. Yeah. So I'm going to get another groove, make sure my inside hand is sliding, I'm evaluating my wall thickness. I'm thick just from about here down, so I'm going to um, do a pull right there. Here we go. Alright, now 
some of you may be wondering, what am I making? Well, I'm making a bowl. This is inverse throwing, okay? Uh, I learned this from a great article in a magazine called Pottery Making Illustrated. It was years ago. And I started doing it. I read this article. I was like, that's dumb. That doesn't make any sense. And I tried it. And it worked awesome. Basically, the, 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 the article posits that if you want to have a bowl with a big belly, get the height going first this way, and then belly it out. Okay? And um, for me, the belly of the bowl, that, that's the soul of the bowl. All right? And uh, I love a bowl with a lot of belly. We'll talk about aesthetics in another video, but for now, you can see that it's kind of shaped like a trumpet right now. And my wall thickness is pretty even all the way. Uh, I'm a slightly thicker down there, but I'm not concerned. All right, gonna rock my green Mud Tools rib. Love these things. They're insanely expensive, but they last forever. All right. Oh, maybe I should end this and go to another video. All right, so we're gonna end it right here. And the next video will be on shaping, and we're just going to start off right here. Thanks for watching. Peace.